before I let the slideshow run, I thought I'd give a short introduction. While doing research for my video about pulp magazines, I became really interested in futurism in the 1920s. In case you don't know what futurism is, it's people's vision of what the future would look like from the perspective of their own time. Because we live in the time that we do, this past futurism is called retrofuturism. The 1920s style of futurism is interesting to me because it's right between the two most common forms of futurism we see today, steampunk and atom punk. I'm sure many of you already know what these are, but I'll explain anyway. Steampunk is a retro-futuristic style based on Victorian futurism, when people believed that machines would be operated with a complex series of mechanical gears. There's no electricity, everything is mechanical in some way. Atom Punk, on the other hand, is based on 1950s and 1960s predictions. Everything is round, sleek, and powered by atomic energy, so think of the Jetsons or the Fallout game series. This gives the 1920s a rather unique position between these two. But if you've watched my video on pulp magazines, you'll know that science fiction definitely existed during the 20s, and there were stories, novels, and films that used sci-fi elements. Being in the modern age, futurism of the 1920s leans more towards atom punk, but it also has a somewhat diesel punk flavor. Diesel punk, by the way, is a roughly 1940s retrofuturism. I know I've made this comparison before, but I'll do it again. In America, the 1920s were similar to the 1950s in that they took place in the immediate aftermath of a massive, destructive war, and both carried an air of optimism for the future. The only difference is that science fiction was not as mainstream in the 20s as it was in the 50s, so it didn't quite fully develop a unique look that permeated society. But I found their ideas about the future to be fascinating, especially how they thought that dirigibles, also known as zeppelins, were the air travel of the future. This is a pretty unique characteristic of futurism in this period, because they had only rose to prominence after the Victorian era and their popularity ended in the 1930s. So for the following photos, I scoured a magazine called Science and Invention that was published throughout the 1920s. This magazine predictably focused on the latest developments in science, as well as the most recent patents and inventions, but it also occasionally delved into futurism. This was largely due to the input of its editor, Hugo Gernsback who is also the first editor of the science fiction pulp magazine Amazing Stories, which I talked about in my earlier video. Gernsback was also helped by illustrator Frank R. Paul, who created the most memorable science fiction covers and pop art of that time, and I will definitely make another video just for his illustrations. While browsing the issues of this magazine, I thought many of the pictures were interesting, so I thought I'd just make a short little video with them. If you're interested in this kind of thing, I got these from digital copies online at AmericanRadioHistory.com, which has a huge selection of various vintage magazines freely available to view. I'll leave a link in the description. 